Breaking tonight, Hillary Clinton is not the only one who will not identify this enemy as radical Islam. Here is President Obama just earlier today. And so uh, to the degree that anyone would equate uh, the terrible actions that took place in Paris with uh, the views of Islam, uh, you know, those kinds of stereotypes are counterproductive. They're wrong. Uh, they will lead, I think, to greater recruitment into terrorist organizations over time if this becomes uh, somehow defined as uh, a Muslim problem as opposed to a terrorist problem. Joining me now, Ayan Hirsi Ali. She is the author of the book Heretic and founder of the Ayan Hirsi Ali Foundation. Ayan was raised Muslim and was forcibly mutilated before renouncing the religion and its ideals. Ayan, thank you very much for being with us tonight. And so what of that argument? We've heard that argument from the president and his supporters that if we call it a war on radical Islam, we're going to alienate the, the rest of the Muslim world, not just the radical Islamists, the rest of the Muslim world. Um, I think the president is right. Uh, the United States of America and the rest of Western civilization is not at war with Islam. But Islamic extremists is invoking Islamic theology and aided and abetted by some Muslim nations, the most prominent of which is Saudi Arabia, another one is Qatar, uh, are waging war on us. And this strategy from 9-11, that is indeed the former President Bush, but also other Western leaders, the strategy that if we equate, if we, if we say this is something within Islam, um, we're going to lose the battle to them that has been tried and it is failing as we are seeing now in Paris. I lived in Europe and the entire leadership agreed on this argument but what we are witnessing now is a failure of that strategy. We need to face the problem and we, st we should start by naming it. We look at this over and over again and we believed here in America many that if we wouldn't use that terminology and did and pulled back from the Middle East somewhat perhaps they wouldn't hate us so much, perhaps they wouldn't want to hit us, perhaps there'd be some detente with these people. It, it now appears that hasn't worked. It hasn't worked. We, listen, one of the things that we really have to digest is that Islamic extremism is older than this election cycle and the last one, and 9-11. It is at least, Sunni Islamic extremism is at least 95 to 98 years old. And it's going to outlast this election cycle. This, is, this problem is to stay with us. It's not what we do or say, what we don't do or we don't say. We have a substantial number of people on the planet who are Muslim, invoking Islamic theology, who have declared war on our way of life, the association between men and women, on our tolerance, our freedoms, the core on everything that Western civilization is. We need to acknowledge that and that's defend the ourselves. That's and the way to fast thing that, to do is wait, to acknowledge the that. ideology. That, I want to ask you about that. That, to that's develop the thing, a kind of ideology, for instance. That's the thing, is that it doesn't matter, it doesn't, doesn't matter what we call them or what we do. It seems when they, they object to our, our belief system. They have left, uh, object to our way of life. They object to the fact that, that we don't necessarily believe in Allah, that we, that we have the First Amendment, that we have the Bill of Rights. They object to so much about who we are and the way we live. And so you wrote a fascinating Absolutely. piece and recently about how, of how, how we could, as a practical matter, go about protecting ourselves. And the first thing in your article was learn from Israel. Absolutely. Israel, from the time it was founded, had to deal with this. And over time, and in a painful way, Israel developed an infrastructure. It is legal. It is counterterrorism measures. It's intelligence. They know what they're doing. We should stop demonizing Israel. We should start learning from them. And by my knowledge, it's it, it, you know, Israel really doesn't call, doesn't, hasn't declared war on Islam. Israel collaborates with some of the Muslim countries when they want to collaborate with Israel. Um, but Israel is at a place now where I think in terms of um, fighting domestic terrorism, they have made such headway that the, scene, the scenes we've seen in Paris are unthinkable. Yes, the terrorists are using knives and cars and other desperate measures, but the mass murder of Israelis 
on Israeli soil is now unthinkable because of the measures that they've put in place. Mm -hmm. And I think we, we have a lot to learn from them. Mm -hmm. I, I recommend the piece to everybody. It's fascinating and offers so many smart insights, as we always expect from you, Ayan. Thank you for being here tonight. Thank you, Megan.